I wanted to get a daily news summary when I wake up without having to check my phone. So now, every morning, I'm greeted by... It's not just news summaries either, I've experimented with printing out recipes, creating ASCII art, and even printing out graphics using this printer. Before I dive in and show you how I did all of this, let's talk about the hardware. I purchased this Star NP10 dot matrix printer from eBay, and it's a pretty simple machine. There's a few buttons on the front. This button online lets you toggle whether or not the printer is active and can receive data. NLQ stands for near letter quality, and toggling it on improves the text that comes out of the printer by printing each line twice with a slight offset. On the back is just a power cord and a parallel printer port. Now I can't plug this in as is to any computer that I own, so I have a parallel to USB adapter plugged into that port. On the other end of that is a Raspberry Pi 0W, a tiny hobby computer. Why use that? Well, it has Wi-Fi connectivity for one, and runs the Linux operating system. Both of these mean that it's easy to communicate with the printer directly, and I can access it from any device in my house on the same network. So that's the actual physical setup of the printer. Now how do we actually get something to print out of it? First, I can SSH into the Raspberry Pi, and now we have a direct line to our printer. This is where all of our fun is actually going to take place. Once we're in here, if we list out all the files in the dev USB directory, there's only one in here, LP0. LP stands for line printer, and zero being the first, and rather only, one. Now using this is pretty straightforward. We can write any kind of data to this file, and it will be directly interpreted by the printer and get printed out. So let's try this out. Echo hello world to that dev USB LP0 file. And look at that, our text appears immediately on the page. What about something larger? Well, I typed out this file here, recipe.txt, and if we go ahead and cat recipe.txt into that file, we get all of it printed out as well. So we've established that we can send raw text to this printer and it will happily print it out on the page. But what if we wanted to get a little bit more fancy? While we don't have access to emojis or the bulk of Unicode characters, this printer does support a very specific set of special characters. They coincide with something called code page 437, a character set originally for IBM computers. We can scroll down here and take a look at the grid supplied for it. Now let's say that we wanted to print out something like the pound currency symbol. We need the hexadecimal value for this, starting with the row and then the column. So we are at row 9 and column C. If we go back into our terminal, we can echo en backslash x 9c to that dev USB LP0 file. And well, we don't see anything. So let me echo out some additional text as well. So you can see that I printed out both the pound symbol from our X9C here, as well as the test text that we supplied it afterwards. Now the reason that we have to supply this additional text is that sometimes, at least with this printer, I don't think I'm hitting the buffer limit for the amount of data that's supplied to it. The printer doesn't actually fire off writing the text. I have to supply it with more characters or more data. All right, now that we know all of this, it would be tedious to have to write out every file that I would wanna print. So instead we can automate some of this. Here's a basic script that I've written. So first we open up that print file for writing using fopen. Then I create some centered text. Now the function for that centered text is pretty straightforward. I just take a length of text, in that case, hey there, and I just subtract it from the width in characters of the total page, which is 80. Then I divide that by two, and that gives me the spaces that I need to have on both sides of the text in order to have it centered on the page. Now actually, because this prints from right to left, we really don't need the right side spacing, and instead we can just return a left side spacing and then the text itself. So let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. And perfect, nicely centered text right in the middle of the page. So let's ramp up the complexity a little bit. For my daily newspaper, I wanted a title in a large box at the top, along with a day of the week and date. These lines are special characters in that code page 437 table. 
and we can use hex values in our PHP script to print those out. So like before, we start by opening up that print file at dev USB LP0 to write. If it can't be opened for any reason, we have a little bit of error handling here. And then I define the constant of the page width, so that way, if I need to, I can change it around, or I at least know in later parts of my code what this 80 might be referencing. After that, let's define the characters in code page 437 that we're going to be using to make this title. So we have top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, all of these characters, and each of these represent a character in that code page 437 based on the hex value. So that top left character is C9, and if we go to code page 437, we can see here C, and then the ninth row here is this corner here with two double lines. So that's our top left piece. So then going down, let's actually talk about how we assemble the header in our code. So we start out with, I just want a border on the top, which is our top left piece, followed by repeating the character for the horizontal double, and then a top right piece. The actual header information has a vertical double piece, a space, the day of the week, some more spaces, daily newsletter in the center, some more spaces, and then the full date at the end, followed by a space, another vertical double character. And then finally, the bottom just repeats the same as the top for that border, but replaces the characters on the sides with bottom left and bottom right instead. And then at the end of this, we just write it to the printer and then also write some new lines five times so that it brings that paper up so we can see it. So let's go ahead and save this and run it and see what happens. Okay, well, it looks almost good, but I messed up my spacing somewhere. If we go back and take a look at the file, go back up into where we're assembling the header, somewhere in this line here, I'm overflowing the amount of characters that can be on this page, and it's going to the next line. So let me think about this and step through and see where I'm hitting that difference at. I forgot about the vertical double characters. They're characters as well and take up a place in the page. So actually, this needs to be page width divided by 2 minus 13. And likewise with this one over here, this needs to be 21. So let's go ahead and save this and run it one more time and see if that fixes it. All right, perfect. That looks great, exactly what I want. Now, what if we wanted to add some more meaningful information to this? Well, let's take a look at the script that I wrote to print out my newsletter each morning. Okay, so starting out with the location, we have GPS coordinates for my house, as well as WMO codes to associate with the weather. We have some stocks that I'm keeping track of, as well as keys for the API that I'm using, same with the news, and same with different subreddits. After that, I used a couple different API endpoints to grab things like the weather, stock information, news headlines, and Reddit top posts for the day. And then we start actually writing to the printer. So you can see here we have that header information that we looked at earlier. And then I assemble the different pieces of the data that needs to be sent to the printer. So the headlines, the subreddits, stock information, header and footer. We write all that to the printer, flush it out, echo a message to the terminal to let me know that I'm done, and then we also have some helper functions down here that do some additional formatting or split long lines into maximum length so that they're not cut off in the middle of words. The script doesn't look the greatest, but it's done in a procedural pattern with sections that correlate to the data that's being retrieved, formatted, and then sent to the printer. So there we have it, our daily newspaper. So I can send this to the printer as is by running phpnews.php and see what our newspaper looks like for today.
So is there anything else that we can do with this printer? How about graphics? So thanks to the people running minus zero degrees.net, I was able to find a scan of this exact printer's user manual. Now there are sections for designing and creating your own fonts, but what interested me more was the section on userdesigned.graphics. Actually, let's take a quick aside to talk about how this printer actually prints and what makes this possible. If we take a look under the cover, you can see that there's a ribbon sandwiched between the printhead and the paper. This ribbon is coated in ink, and whenever we want to print something, the printhead moves left to right, and using a column of eight pins, there's actually nine for things like descenders on G or P, but we can ignore that. They fire off specific ones in sequence. These pins punch into the ink ribbon, leaving a pattern of dots on the paper behind it, hence the name dot matrix printer. If we take a look at something that we printed, you can see this sequence of dots as we move from left to right. Each letter is monospaced, made up of a grid of six columns and eight rows. So if you wanted to create your own character set, you can design symbols using this grid and send it to the printer. Since each column is made up of eight rows where pins are either on or off, you can represent each column with one byte. Let's say I wanted to make some kind of symbol that looks like this. I would go left to right and using binary notation, starting from the bottom as one and the top as 128, determine the value of each column. Now I could create a new character set in the printer's memory and pass this symbol in, associating it with an already available letter. Instead of doing that though, there's another mode that this printer has that lets us print out arbitrary graphics of any size and shape using that same concept. We can switch the printer to use that mode by passing in a specific sequence of characters and then our data representing our symbol. I'm going to go ahead and reach for PHP again to do this. So I have our basic script set up to write to the printer and I wanna create a sequence of commands associated with these characters on the screen here. So we need the escape code, which is 27, followed by the code for an asterisk, which I know is 42. Now in this manual, I specify CHR zero, so we should put a zero here, but instead I'm going to use five. You see there's different densities of graphics that we can have with this printer, starting from zero all the way up to six. I'm going to be using five, which is plotter graphics, and what that does is give us the exact same amount of dots per inch vertically as horizontally. So every graphic will have the same aspect ratio. The next two digits are calculated using this table here, and it depends on how wide our image is in columns. I'm only going to be using six for this symbol, so we do six as the first number and then zero as the next. Now the next six digits need to be the data associated with our symbol that we calculated earlier. Now I can't pass in the command as is to the printer or else it'll print out that entire string of numbers as is. Instead I have to convert each one to the character it represents based on the integer number. So I can use a for each loop to do this. Okay, so it splits apart that command into an array of each of those integers, and then uses the chr method in PHP to get the underlying representing character. So let's go ahead and save this, send it to the printer using php symbol.php, and see what happens. It might be hard to see, but there is our symbol in all its little glory. How about we tackle something bigger though, like this picture of a pretty cool little guy. So first we have to make sure this image will actually fit on the page. We're using 72 dots per inch, and I happen to know that a full page's width is eight inches wide. So our image has to be a max width of 576 pixels. This one is 1440, which is a bit much, so let's go ahead and scale this down to about 400. Unfortunately though, we can't print in color, so we have to convert this into black and white. But we can't use traditional black and white, which is grayscale. We have to use just black and white pixels since that's all we can print on this printer. Each pixel is either black, one printed, or white, zero not printed. We can accomplish this by converting our image to something with a one bit representation. This tool by Jonas Wagner uses dithering to keep a lot of the detail and has some sliders to tweak the look. This looks pretty good, so I'll go ahead and save this image. And I've gone ahead and uploaded it to the Raspberry Pi. So we can see that here in images. All right, so we have an image that the printer can understand, but how do we get this actually printed out? I'm going to reach for PHP yet again. So following everything we know about the printer so far, this script opens up the image and allows it to be read line by line using image create from PNG. It then breaks up the image into a series of lines that are eight pixels high. It goes through each of those lines one pixel at a time and determines the byte value of that entire column based on the combination of white and black pixels. Then we open up a connection to the printer, and after setting the line spacing to be more precise, we go through each of those command strings and send it to the printer one by one using that user design graphics and plotter aspect ratio that we just saw earlier. 
it sends each line and then at the end of it prints a few additional spaces and sleeps for three seconds. So let's go ahead and see if this runs. And look, it's Majora. One thing I want to change though is how light this image is. I'd like to make it just a bit darker. It might be because this printer and ink cartridge is old, but I might be able to fix this in a hacky way by making the printer print each line twice. So I just added this simple for loop, which should go over each line twice. So let's go ahead and run it one more time. All right, I think it looks a bit better. I can see them a bit more clearly. This printer has been so fun to experiment with and I'm finding more and more excuses to use it. Around Christmas time, I printed out some baking recipes for my girlfriend to use so she could hang them around the kitchen instead of having to bounce between tabs on a screen. I'm also experimenting with generative art and seeing if I can get some different colored ribbons to use so I can print multiple colors on a single page. If you have any questions about this, have any suggestions for what you'd like to see printed, or have any information about this printer or anyone's like it, feel free to drop by in the comments or email me directly.